Y'all ready? Let me put my power ring on. Give me a second. <laughs> my power ring. <laughs> a few more and I'm Thanos, guys. <laughs> 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 Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of This Is My Bourbon Podcast. I am your host, Perry, and back in the the studio bourbon room thing, the bar and the the bourbon, it's Curtis and Swan. What's up? Hi. I thought we were going... I I lost it a little bit there at the end. I thought we were going, like, back in the saddle again, and I was like, (laughs) yes, Aerosmith. No... Not today. Maybe. Not today? Maybe in the. F- okay. I haven't had any bourbon yet, so All Aerosmith right. could very well be in the yeah, future. Yeah, there we go. I'm not, yeah. I'm not quite sure, but guys, welcome back. Cause I'm back in the <laughs> saddle again. <laughs> All right. So it didn't take any bourbon for <laughs> Curtis. Um, speaking of Curtis, somebody's got a birthday today. Birthday boy. It's Curtis. Curtis's birthday, everybody! Yay! Hey, thanks, thanks. <laughs> so, um, in celebration of Curtis's birthday. Patreon's getting a bonus episode, which will be recorded after this. And basically what's going to happen is Curtis is going to go up to my bourbon cabinet. Anything that he sees that he wants to try is his for the trying. So yeah. that's the thing. Yeah, so that's if you want, If you want to awesome. hear that, um, if you want to hear Curtis's little birthday celebration, patreon.com slash mybourbonpodcast is where you can hear that. And that will be up this Friday as well. Maybe a little bit sooner if I can get around to it. But anyway, so we're kicking off the show as we always do with Flying Blind. We're going to blind the guests on a new pour. And um, <laughs> Swan's got his power ring stuck around yes. his finger. We had cupcakes. They had rings. <laughs> I got excited. <laughs> Are your fingers swollen from the cupcakes now, too? Is that <laughs> it's been, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie. I've had one drink, and it was David Nicholson. That was it this whole week. So wow. Is, I'm going. I'm getting back into it. Yeah. Yeah. So far, it smells like bourbon. Well, I'm <laughs> yes. hoping to get some more notes out of it. And there but it is. Light bourbon. Yeah. Interesting. It's yeah, I'm not getting a whole lot on the nose. It's not bad, though, what I, what yeah. I can find. It's mostly sweet, I would say. Yeah, I would agree with that. Well, the palate sure does have a lot more than the nose yeah. does. It's got a lot more going on. It's got Whoa. Some, it's got some oak to it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I like that. Wow. The finish is a little short. I'll say that much. Yeah, it's a little short. Um, the palate's good, though. I mean, it makes it makes up for it a little bit. Um, so, I mean, it, for me, it's got not a huge nose to it. And then short finish. Palate's decent. I'm not really sure what profile it's reminding me of. I'm gonna c- say. Sorry, go ahead, Kurt. I'm on this kind of the same boat. Yeah. Um, the nose, I wasn't thrilled about. I didn't. See, yeah. I didn't get anything. Uh, the palate, I, I enjoyed. And like you guys were saying, it, it, the the finish was short. Um, overall, I'm I like it. I won't say anything bad about it. I I enjoy it. It's just my my second sip was better than the first. Second time through, I'm picking up a lot more of a cherry flavor to it. Um, kind of a cherry syrup, really specifically. This kind of reminds me of an old-fashioned. It's so sweet to me. Hmm. The oak is there, yeah, but it just kind of gives way to this overwhelmingly sweet kind of profile. And almost to the point where I, I feel like I've got some sugar yeah. in my mouth, too. You know what I mean? Um, it's I, knowing what this is. It's very off profile. Huh? It's very That's off profile from from what you normally get from this brand. Yeah, I literally I could not pick out where this is from. I wouldn't have been able to either, honestly. And so, I guess that's probably, uh, I'm assuming that it's going to be like a single barrel. Well, considering that the episode is a, is all about single barrels, yeah, it is. So it's a In single fact, barrel. It is. So I'm going to yeah. definitely assume that that's why the profile's off. Yeah. 
Yeah. Which goes back to the episode we we uh-huh. did on Small Batch. We we yep. kind of uh, mentioned some of those aspects about it. So definitely go back and listen to that one if if you're listening to this one. Yeah. So to to Curtis's point, this is the companion episode and actually kind of the wrap up to our uh, very small little series on Small Batch versus Single Barrel Bourbons. And we'll get into the whole conversation here in a little bit. But before we get there, what do you guys, do you have any guess as to what this might be? I couldn't guess it if you had given it to me. I mean, seriously. I have no idea. Like, almost the the oak and the kind of sweetness Uh makes me lean towards almost like a Russell's kind of stuff. Yeah. But I don't know. It doesn't have, like, the depth and nose and the finish that I usually get with, like, a Russell's. Yeah. And... To be honest, the proof to me, but mm-hmm. I mean, if you said it's off profile, it could be anything. So. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, I have no. It's bourbon a- light. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the, the <laughs> Never mind. Uh, it's a Blanton's pick. Huh? Really? Yeah. It is a Blanton's pick. This is the most unique Blanton's I think I've ever had. Yeah, I was not in a like, like honeyed. Yeah. Yeah, like it does kind of taste like it might have been finished in something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like a double oaked Blanton's. Yeah. That would be weird. Yeah. Hey, Buffalo Trace, maybe you should try that sometime. <laughs> or don't. I don't care. And if you do, <laughs> can you offer it in the States, please? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, overall, yeah. it's it, I'm, it's good. I'm a little disappointed with it, but. I think I would be a little, fine. a little disappointed knowing that it's Blanton's. Um, but prior to not knowing, I would be, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. Yeah. The thing about it is Blanton's is characteristically <clears throat> inconsistent. You know, it's a single barrel product, mm-hmm. yeah. but even just the, the standard stuff that you find on the shelves doesn't really seem to be a whole lot of consistency with it. Sure. It's good. But as far as like profile to profile, I mean, I'm, I'm never going that's Blanton's. You're picking it out. Yeah. 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 Um, I have a theory about Blanton's. It's the tops. Okay. You know how they've got, you know, it's oh all spelled gosh. out. Yeah. Uh-huh. I feel like because it's a single barrel, and like you said, it's inconsistent, they made something on each one that makes it collectible so that a person's influenced to buy more than one. Oh, and then okay. kind of realize there's, you know, there's more than just that last bottle I had. Right. If I'm going to get all of the, the corks, then I've got to try potentially, you know, different profiles each yeah. time. You you went a Almost different... hundreds and... Yeah. 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 You went a different way with that than what I was anticipating. Oh, okay. Because the funniest thing in the world to me, and it, it's totally just a joke at this point, but when people go, yeah, those L bottles of Blanton's are way better than those O bottles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or the B bottles the suck B bottle. compared to the uh-huh. S bottles. It just, it absolutely cracks me up. And I thought for a second that that's where you were going with it. And I was like, Swan, Swan, please don't do this. Swan, we need to talk. (laughs) Which, a (laughs) funny story, uh, when I visited Buffalo Trace, we had Freddie. And uh, Freddie said he had somebody come in and she goes, you know, I really just need to find this L bottle. These... Are there like I can't find any L's, and I want the L L bottles because there they there's something about it that just tastes so great, and it and I had a, I had one of the bottle one of the L bottles, and then I got another one and it tasted exactly the same, but I haven't been able to get it ever since. <laughs> and Freddie go, you played yourself. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> Freddie was like, well, I think what it was is that it might have been from the same batch and same barrel, and that's probably what you're getting and she was like that makes total sense <laughs> it's like yeah it does <laughs> but he told that story and it you know i don't do it justice on telling it because he was it's freddie yeah. yeah it was freddie yeah. and he was the one that you know experienced it but it was pretty funny so i, I definitely was on <laughs> i thought that's where he was going with it <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but that is an interesting yeah i mean it just might be a sales thing or it just looked to look cool, no, it I totally no could idea. be, or yeah. it could be they didn't. Even, they just didn't even think about like, I don't know. what you were mentioning. Yeah, I mean, I've I've got I think I'm on my fourth bottle of Blantons that I've had, and every one I've made sure to get a different letter. So eventually, I'll get yeah. them. Um, but I may not have bought more than one 
if I wasn't collecting the letters. Well, sure. Because that was yeah. my entire intention behind it is I'm going to get that and then make one of those barrel head stands with the, the Blanton's toppers and things. Yeah. Well, think think about Blade and Bow. Blade and Bow really is just kind of an average whiskey. Mm-hmm. But they do the same kind of thing as far as like a marketing gimmick goes. You collect all the keys and it's, you know, hooray. Yeah. But, you know, the difference is that with Blanton's, like you actually have something kind of tangible at the end of it. And you can mail them into Buffalo Trace for free. They'll give you a, a, a barrel stave with them all mounted. Yeah. And I think that that's a little bit more, I don't know, understandable or <laughs> more acceptable. Memorable. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm talking more from a uh, like a marketing standpoint or a gimmick yeah. standpoint. Like, I just think it's a little bit more reasonable than just like, yeah, I got all the keys. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. I like that. Anyway. They're just fun little leave behind. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Anyway. Little little tchotchke. Yeah, a little tchotchke. <laughs> Except the I think the the barrel stave is Oh, I think the barrel stave's awesome. Yeah, that's like a cool thing. Yeah, for sure. Well, anyway, that was flying blind. As we get into the episode though, I have to ask you guys, what have you been drinking recently? And I think Swan might have already answered oh, that. Oh, I ruined question. that one. Um, <laughs> David Nicholson. Um, I'm having just the, I think it's just the special reserve, uh, but it's the one with the black label instead of the 1843. Uh-huh. It's pretty good. Chad said something the first time I tried that, that it's kind of got a turkey profile to him and I see it more and more, I can see especially that. with the bottle that I've got. So it's, um, it's interesting. I like it. Um, it's different. It's out of, I believe it's out of St. Louis. So, uh, it's actually, uh, Lux Row. Really? Mm-hmm. Lux Row as a, is, is the one that. Owns that brand now. Anyway. I have been drinking Wild Turkey Kentucky Spirit. I got another bottle of that. Did you? Yeah, I've been kind of just enjoying it lately. Um, have you seen the new bottle yet? All right. I, I got the new <laughs> bottle. Don't get him started. Yeah, I got the new bottle. I like it. Um, I like the new bottle. I think it's really dude, nice the new looking. bottle, whatever they did with the new, those new bottles, the bourbon tastes better. <laughs> Um, I knew that's right. Yeah, going. I, that was perfect. Yeah, um, but yeah, that's what I've been drinking. Uh, the bottle, I don't. I'm not a fan. I kind of like be it. Honest. I kind of um, like it. I I think that it's, you know, we, I think we've talked about this on the show before that with yeah, the old style bottle, like the neck would break and everything. So it was just more cost effective. It was more realistic for them to. Oh, Curtis got got a little peri pour there. Was it? Uh, maybe not. Yeah, like, ah, <laughs> never mind. I saw what I thought I never mind. Doesn't matter. <laughs> he was like, I saw my my pour and then By the way, speaking of Perry pour, I know I'm kinda all over the place tonight, but Swan did a thing back in January. Do you know about this? I believe so. Perry pour is now officially part of the Urban Dictionary. Is it really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And it That's has price. So for anybody who knows what it, what the Urban Dictionary is like, you know, it has the the definition and has it as it's, you know, as it should be used. And the the phrase that you put on there, Swan, was it gets me every single time. And it's like, "That's a lot of bourbon there, champ. <laughs> you got yourself a Perry pour." You yourself- <laughs> champ was the perfect <laughs> word to use in that. Somehow, being on Urban Dictionary legitimizes this. It should be the opposite. Oh, it, yeah, but exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I put that, and then I put uncorking on there, because that's kind of one of the things that Chad uses uh, quite a bit uh-huh. in his videos and stuff. And uh, it, it wouldn't take it, because I tried to give him credit, and it won't allow names. But it took Perry. I'm all for that. And Perry Poor is now officially. That's great. An Urban Dictionary word. Anyway, was there anything else you'd been drinking? I apologize. I interrupted uh, you. No, just the Kentucky Spirit. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been doing a lot of different drinking events, I guess. Uh, Chad and Sarah's engagement party was this past Saturday. Huh? Okay. Um, that was fun. There was a really good uh, Weller Antique pick that they had. Um, so I dove into that quite a bit. I've really been enjoying these older bottles of turkey that I've kind of accumulated mm-hmm. recently and been, in, I mean, just enjoying the crap out of those. Oh, gosh, what else? I've been taking deep dives into the, the liquor cabinet, too, into the bourbon cabinet. and um, just like stuff yeah. that you hadn't 
that yeah. have been sitting in the back. Yeah, and you know, I, I've been fortunate enough to have some people come over too. And you know, when when folks come over, it's an excuse for me to break out good stuff. So, yeah. you know, I had the the Heaven Hill pre fires uh, that I have um, the other night. Um, we killed a bottle of the Knob Creek pick that I was on with Lucy, and um, you know, there's just been a, a few really good experiences, I guess with drinking that I've had recently and, and just being able to share some fantastic bourbon with really great people. Mm. And, uh, yeah, it's been nice. So it's always good to have drinking buddies Yeah, and not be like, well, I'm just going to have an extra pour of Four Roads of Single Barrel <laughs> Barrel yeah. tonight. But I actually get to share it with someone. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So getting a lot of nuttiness on that. Yeah. So um, the next pour that we had was this Elijah Craig Single Barrel pick. Out of a store in Nashville, Swan, would you mind looking on the back of the bottle there? Because it's got all the stats and everything. Uh, as Woodland to... Wine Merchant. All right. Here it we go. Is age 11 years, uh, barrel proof 125, down to bottle proof in 94. Warehouse F, floor 3. So this was uh, actually a Christmas gift to me from Adam Terry, who's one of the patrons of the show and listeners and all that good stuff. Yeah, and shout out for following me. Yeah, <laughs> he was the, he was the one that, uh, the that kicked follow, off. The, yeah, yeah, follow that's me. And that's what I noticed the most was if you're listening, to Adam. Uh, I told was telling Perry, I was like, yeah, I got followed by uh, you know a couple of the bourbon listeners, and uh, I was like, I kind of feel bad because <laughs> I just post like nothing to do about bourbon. <laughs> And you just lost like a hundred followers, right? Yeah, there. yeah. <laughs> I'll do better, guys. I promise. Right. Yeah, he's always yeah. posting stuff about cars, and I was like, man, my car's having some rough times. And I think we we were talking about doing a, an engine swap into my dainty little SUV <laughs> at one point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's funny, man. Um, yeah. Anyway, so this was a bottle that he he gifted me over Christmas, and uh, I was like, dang. Yeah. Um. One of the better Elijah Craig picks I've ever had. Yes. Mm-hmm. Seriously. It's not necessarily reminiscent of the old 12 years, even though it's almost the same age. Like, it still has some of that kind of traditional Elijah Craig, like, nuttiness with the, the um, you know, I, I always say it has a, a, a snickerdoodle flavor mm. to it, too. But there's something kind of... I, it's some kind of green note, and I can't quite pick it out. And it oh, it's actually a little bit piney. That's what it is. Yeah, it's like a piney tobacco kind of yes. thing. Yes, and it lingers Thank in you. your mouth, like even as the finish is going uh-huh. on. Uh huh. So like it's going down your throat. It's moved on, and then it's still like oh, but I'm here mm-hmm. in your mouth. It's pretty cool. At 94 proof too. Mm. It's a great finish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean seriously, it. The, as far as a finish goes, it almost kind of reminds me of uh, Boone County 12 year um, in that, you know, with at same kind of age range, uh, a little bit higher in proof, but it still has this really full bodied quality to it that I'm all I'm all for. I'm all about yeah. this. Going so, back to the uh, the finish of it being like a pine. Mm-hmm. It's kind of how I I'm getting it is. Like a pine with like a wood fire, like you're out camping. A yeah, little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, like you're out in the woods, you know, camping. You have a nice fire. You got the smells of the fire. Yeah, you got the pine. And I think to that point, the the kind of fiery notes. I think that's the the barrel char. Yeah, that yeah, I'm picking exactly. up, and it's not necessarily like an oakiness. Like there's still some oak on there, but it's more so this. Charred the fire. charred flavor yeah. mm-hmm. to it. Yeah, and the nose is good, too. You pick up a little bit of that. It's almost like your clothing the day after. Like when yeah. After fire. You, uh-huh. yeah. Mm-hmm. I like the analogy we got going. It's painting a nice picture. So, I like it. So this would be nice, you know, when uh, we get the fire pit built out back, you guys come over and we'll hang out. And yeah. Have, this is have some more of this. A lot better than the pick I brought you. you remember the one that I brought from Kroger? Oh, the Kroger that was one. like identical to what's on the shelf. Uh-huh. I mean, it was almost like they just slapped a label on saying, oh, this is a pick, but yep. not really. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It was interesting. I, I could have pulled that out. Uh, I'm I, glad you pulled this one out. Well, this yeah, I mean, me too. But, you know, as, as far as like single barrels go, 
I feel like everything that we have on the table, it, aside from the old Forester, because I don't know what that's like that you know that Curtis brought, but I, I wanted to kind of make sure that I pulled good stuff out for the single barrel conversation. So I figured let's uh, let's talk a little bit too about what single barrel whiskey or single barrel bourbon is, and I think that it's kind of self explanatory, but you for know the knowledge. I, it it. It begs to be talked about to a degree. So let's we have to kind of back up a little bit. As a refresher, small batch is anywhere from one to, you know, however many barrels. You know, that's kind of indeterminable. Single barrel, though. There is a cap on that, though, right? And not, not like a specific, but it, at some point it ends. Right? I think Correct. so. I think so. But, you know, to what was – Swan, you said you listened to the small batch episode. Yeah, today. I mean, it seems like it, you can barrel the entirety of the distillery and still technically call it a small batch. Okay. Um, I mean, it's not, it's not really determined. No regulated. Yeah. Um, there are people that put like extra adjectives on it, like uh, very small Larson. batch, extremely yeah. rare small batch, just stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. But single barrel, though, there is a very strict definition to it. And, I mean, it's right there in the name. It's a single barrel. It's one specific container of whiskey. And we talked at length last time about what, you know, a small batch can, can offer you. And it's consistency. It's a, a flavor profile that you're familiar with and everything. Single barrel, though. For me, you know, while there may be some of those familiar qualities to it 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 still seems to be an ever-changing thing mm -hmm. i mean you look at you know elmer t lee was the first person to um to bottle a single barrel and uh, I, I was listening to eddie russell talk about this uh, on bourbon pursuit <clears throat> he said that when when elmer was doing that booker and and jimmy russell said well i'm not doing that because they thought it was inconsistent. They didn't think that it was good enough. Yep. And, you know, Booker's was born from that. And, um, you know, Rare Breed was born from that and, and everything, too. Because it was a small batch product, mm. um, but still kind of had that changing quality to it as well. Yeah. Um, but what, what, what do you guys think about Single Barrel? Like, is it a good representative of representation rather of of bourbon or you know is it kind of an anomaly as far as like bourbon goes i think that it's kind of a great thing to bourbon i don't think it's a an anomaly i think it's a branch of it you know oh yeah um, sure an extension of of bourbon um because there's so many times that you get a single barrel and some single barrels they lean and there's variations between this but some single barrels ha usually stay a consistent sort of profile, some of them. And then you go to, towards the other side of the spectrum, and you have some that are they're ever-changing. And you, you're you like, whoa, oh, yeah. this product is cha changes every single time I have it. Yeah. Like, I think sort of what I've noticed, um, at least having multiple kind of new riff single barrels, I've noticed some a lot of those are sim kind of similar. Yeah. In the sense, and maybe that has something to do with it being they're younger and yeah, you know, they, sure. It's not as it's they're a younger company. Like there hasn't been as much produced stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but that's one thing I've noticed. But I really like it, and it's I think it's also another uh, good attribute of you're wanting more, and you want to explore different parts of bourbon, and yeah. explore and change your palate. And really recognize some of those notes, and I think that's a good, good way of doing it. Of like, oh, I didn't catch that on any other ones, but that's kind of how I feel about it. I I'm a big fan of single barrels. Yeah, I like that. Um, if you kind of get hooked on one in particular bourbon, like let's say Henry McKenna Ten, uh, every time you go to grab that, it's going to be a different bottle. So even though you're just really aiming for, I want something that's ten years old. I want something that's a hundred proof. And I want something that's Heaven Hill. Every single one you get, you get, you get it is going to be different. So I mean, you can kind of have a different experience, even though you're using the same guidelines to pick your product. 
Um, and then also with barrel picks, I've never been on a pick, but Perry has, and you can you can tell everyone it's one fun to go on, and then two you kind of get to cherry pick oh exactly yeah. what you want out. Oh of yeah. It. So if you go on a 107 pick and say, I really like 107, but I want something with some extra oak, or I want something with some extra cherry. If you've got a barrel that leans that way, then you not only you know kind of picked one that you like, but you almost curated the flavor you're looking for mm-hmm. along with another group. Um, so I kind of use the word curated with the small batch because you can kind of get what you want out of it. But a lot of those are the master stillers making those selections as opposed to maybe a wine and spirit store oh, or yeah. somebody like Perry or Chad going to do a pick. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it just opens up for more experience even within the same bottle of bourbon. And I, I like that a lot. So Yeah, and, you know, I... I, I asked the question not as like, oh, I feel one way or another about this, but maybe more as like a, a devil's advocate. But I am of the kind of the mindset that single barrel is a fairly good representation of what bourbon can be. You know, I, I talked with, with Mary Ann on the interview I did with her about how, you know, you can do all this preparation. You can make sure that your white dog is fantastic, that it's in the the – the center cut of the of the warehouse and you know you're going to get everything right but then when nature takes over you know you there's there's that. no guarantee that that product is going to come out the way that you expected it to that being said though i mean you can have some really really great single barrels mm-hmm. but you can have some really terrible ones too i mean case in point chad's bottle of eh taylor single barrel rough one of the worst bottles of bourbon i've ever tried that blanton's that we had oh. that first bourbon night yeah. that we had with chad uh-huh. and sarah one terrible, of the worst one of I've the worst had. bourbons i've yeah. ever had but then you look at you know what i'm i'm amazed at the consistency of uh, elmer t lee mm-hmm. i think elmer t lee is one of the most consistent single barrels same mash bill as as blanton's same distillery and yet Blanton's winds up being more inconsistent, while Elmer T. Lee winds up having a pretty consistent quality to it, a pretty consistent flavor profile to it from bottle to bottle, from barrel to barrel. Mm. And the fact that that those, and and to that same point, you know, E.H. Taylor single barrel also comes from Buffalo Trace. I don't want to talk, you know, just exclusively about Buffalo Trace, but, you know, to see this one distillery that has all of these different skewed qualities coming from one or two products is a real testament to not just, you know, the greatness that you can get from single barrel, but also kind of the gamble that you take when you, you go with a single barrel product. And I, I personally, like I would rather buy a bottle of E.H. Taylor small batch Mm -hmm. because that to me is always going to be really good quality. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I've ever owned a bottle of E.H. Taylor single barrel. No, I've got one. It's pretty good, but I mean, if I had, I picked it up two or three weeks after I tried Chad's bottle, and I was like, well, I'm going to pick it up because I don't know what I'm going to see it again. Totally different. And oh, yeah. Another one that came out this past year that was just wildly divisive, and part of it, or really the reason it was divisive was because it was a single barrel, was the King of Kentucky. Mm-hmm. There were some people that said, this is top-notch Brown Foreman, can't believe I found a bottle. I'm so glad this is going to be one that I pull out and bring out at Christmas when I got friends around, when I get married or have a kid. Then there's other people that are like, I can't believe I spent the money on it. Yeah. Yeah. Chad. Yeah. Chad's and, that way. <laughs> yeah. And it, when you looked it up, it wasn't because, oh, we both got barrel B, you know, it was because, you know, if somebody got barrel A and somebody got barrel B and barrel A was just better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it, some of them are just so wildly different. They can be a, a fantastic expression of whatever they're branded as, or they could be something that you're kind of wishing you never put out in the wild. So, And I will say there is a, a risk that you take with the price of Absolutely. single barrels. Absolutely. I think that's when you kind of get into, well, maybe I'll just take the small batch because I know that it's going to be pretty consistent and almost so it's al- almost a little bit of a gamble in that sense too sure and almost inherently a single barrel product unless it's a a pretty full barrel which at that point is only going to be maybe four or five years old mm-hmm. 
you know, the price is just going to be higher. Because, you know, I mean, sure, you could be, you could be watering it down to 100 proof or, you know, whatever, but you're just not getting the yield from it that you would from a small batch yeah. or a, or even a large batch. You know, I, th- I think we have to talk about, too, the fact that, you know, small batch may be more consistent than single barrel, but as far as, like, true consistency goes, large batches of bourbon are going to be where it's at. You know what I mean? Like, it, you know, Jim Beam White Label, Ancient Age, um, Evan Williams, mm-hmm. you know, they're all going to be in that really aggressively consistent kind of kind of flavor profile. So you're not straying too far off the mark. You're not, you know, really getting too adventurous with anything. Mm-hmm. But anyway, let's pour something else as yeah. we as we get into it. I had this idea, Swan, mm-hmm. because you brought a Buffalo Trace single barrel. I did, yeah. And I also have one on the table. So I figured it'd be cool to do a side by side with them. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Cool. So mine is a pick from the Frankfurt Bourbon Society, and uh, this one's been about a year since they've done it. Really, it's been that long. Yep. Wow. Uh, mine was a pick that I was a part of uh, for the Carolina Whiskey Society, um, as well as a store in Florida. Uh, and forgive me, I, I, Swan. Look on the the little medallion there. I can't remember what the name of the store was. Primo Liquors. Primo Liquors. Thank you. Pretty stout. Yeah. What's that? Fairy boar. Oh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, you haven't gotten that yet. Sorry. Yep. I apologize. I might make a... Uh, suicide? Suicide, suicide yeah. <laughs> Put it in a little sample bottle and take it home. I've, I've had my pick fairly recently. It's been a while since I've had the, uh, the Frankfurt pick, but I have tried it before. This one... Gave me a sample of it a while back. Yeah, yours to me has more oak. Mine's got more of a sweetness. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yours has more sweetness as well as it, it's funny. Like I actually kind of get like a little bit of a savory quality to it as well. Kind of like a. It's almost like a, the sugar glaze on the outside of a ham. Yeah, that's exactly what that is. There's a little bit of like a delicate fruitiness to it as well mm-hmm. <laughs> just not a phrase that i don't think i've ever used when delicate describing bourbon but delicate fruitiness i'm getting a lot of cherry so i should point out that um you know barrel More with his than anything. with his yeah I yeah agree. the barrel picks are almost always single barrels there are a few people that do barrel picks that they they batch them before you do the pick i've never heard of that before i want to say that uh woodford does that I thought they put out interesting. Yeah, I thought they did some batch stuff, um, but I mean, I I need to look into that some more. But I've heard of Woodford doing that. But these are pretty different, which is oh, yeah. crazy. I've always kind of thought mine was a little bit more off profile from Buffalo Trace as it normally is. Mm-hmm. Oh, night and day. Yeah, I don't think I ever would have been able to tell you that this is the same bourbon. No, yours is definitely a little more off profile. It feels like it's got oh, some yeah. more age on it. Mm-hmm. Mine's pretty. It's pretty close. It's kind of got some accentuated stuff around it, but it's pretty close to the standard offering. And the accentuation is more in the the field of like the sweetness or the the fruitiness. Yeah. But m- the the pick I brought, it just seemed it it has a lot darker. A lot more mm. d- of a darker quality to it. This is almost leaning like George T. Staggish kind of like it's got that like kind of darker quality to it. There's a darker quality, but it also I think with the darker quality, it is more prevalent. Like I think so it too. is brighter. Yeah, like it bursts more in your mouth. The I finish think. is where that really hits for me. Yeah, like it gets towards the back of the back of the tongue, and as the the finish begins, it just kind of explodes. Yeah, for me, it explodes. Whereas uh, Swans is more of a subtle, smooth kind of experience all the way through. I don't have a problem with either. No, no, I don't. I don't have a problem with either. I just, I think I just prefer mine a little bit. Mm-hmm. 
I gotta say, the little suicide between the two of them is not that bad. I still think I prefer yours, though. I think so too. Yours is pretty dominant there too. Yeah. But it does make for a nice little blend, though. Mm-hmm. So, anyway. Sorry, we also had to take a little, bre- little peek yep. behind the curtains. We had to take a little break to have a quick snack. Yeah, and I did some research, and I may have been talking out of my ass about the Woodford thing, but that's okay. <laughs> disregard that comment. It's all good. Yeah, let's we'll disregard that. It happens. It happens. <clears throat> well, I think next, I mean, I know we're still kind of working on this one, but just kind of so we can get in that mindset. I think we should try the uh, the uh, old Forester pick that you sounds good to me brought as well. Liquor barn, you said. Yes. All right. Ooh, good one. That's a solid one. Not bad at all. Yeah. So I've never had an old Forester barrel pick before. I'm actually I've, gonna. I've always seen old Forester picks on the shelves, but I've never tried one. There was only one on the shelf, so I just was like, ah, eh, well, all right, sure, why not. And I knew that you guys wouldn't have it, so... Uh-uh. Cannot say that I do. Mm, this nose is really interesting. Very sweet. Almost chocolatey. Uh-huh. Do you get, like, a little bit of a nutty quality to it at all? A tiny bit. Very specifically, like... Like walnuts? Yeah, that's what I'm getting. Kind of a walnutty. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of an old wooden desk. Yeah, you know, I can definitely like, see that. Like a grandparent's desk, like you know, they had the old the old writing desk where they would sit and write letters. Huh. That's what that that's reminds so me of. That's so specific. But that's what it That's just what it smells like to me. Okay? Yeah, no. <laughs> it just it, that's I mean, we always get specific, but that was just like that was my grandma's writing desk. And she wrote to her husband in World War II. <laughs> We get that specific. You can smell the World War Two, not one. <laughs> yeah, don't get it twisted. You can smell the ink well that she was drawing her ink from. The wax stamp she used <laughs> on the back of the letter. Yeah. <laughs> like we're just drawing narratives. So I think this kind of brings up a good question, a good kind of point to talk about as well. Why have we never bought a bottle of an Old Forester single barrel pick before? I think it's because a lot of places when I go in and they have single barrels that they've picked, they're very proud of that. And they're quick to tell you, it's like, well, what do you have in this special? And of course you're hoping they're like, well, I've got some, you know, Weller, or I've got this in, but most of the time it's, I've got a pick of this in and I've got a pick of this in and it's never yeah. them boasting about the old Forester. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I kind of made this comment to Perry. I never hear anybody pick this. It just shows up. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure who picks this stuff. It could be them, and maybe that's just not their favorite on the shelf or something. But um, they they do tend to just show up. And i got to be honest, I don't know why they don't recommend it, just based on the nose, because it smells pretty good. The nose isn't bad. Yeah, I thought the nose was pretty nice. Yeah. I did taste it, though. Oh, okay. I think it's uh, I think it's fine. There's something in there, though. There is something in there. I, I think just can't quite put my finger if on. If this was the hmm. same proof as the 1920, I would have a new go-to. But I don't. I think it's just a little Warm. almost thin. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting a lot of. It's like a dark one note feel. It what on the nose? What we were getting with the. I felt like we got more notes from the nose than yeah. what I'm getting on the palate. Yeah, there's not like a whole lot of depth to it. It's just one one thing. I hate to say it. Kind of reminds me of Statesman. Really? Yeah. Kind of reminds me of Old Forester Statesman. All mm. right, Monica's going to hate us. <laughs> <laughs> Brad and Chris at Liquor Barn are going to hate me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Getting a lot of it's, pepper. Oh, yeah. It's very spicy. Yeah. But it also has this kind of weird, like, like rotten fruit mm. flavor to it. I'm not getting that. On the very front of the palate, I start to get, I feel, I start to get some of those floral notes. But it's so small that it's like. Oh, yeah. But it's so small that you're like, oh, what? It's why did 
train why did it transform so like it's perfumey. Yeah. It it's like a Yeah. It's like a perfume counter. I don't know, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this might be a classic case of the single barrel didn't uh didn't pull through didn't, a forest. Didn't this quite time. pan out. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Kurt. It's all good. <laughs> I know it's your birthday, and I feel bad that I'm dunking on it. Nah, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could go for that next. Yeah, yeah. We'll fix it with a with a decent birthday. Party. Yeah, may as well. This will be a bottle that I'm like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Swan's right. going full suicide glass now. We're going full suicide glass. All right, you know what? <laughs> Swan's doing it. I'll do it. Curtis, you didn't well, have to. Well, I guess it, if right? I'll, uh, if I'm giving into peer pressure. Peer pressure, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Why not? All right, so uh, all the cool kids are doing it now. <laughs> so Swan brought a special birthday pour for yeah. old Curtis. So, uh, I've had a couple out of the Michter's line. I think one of my favorites being the Michter's American, and uh, some time ago I found a Michter's Ten. Yeah, when did you find that? It's probably like three or four months into me kind of hunting bourbon. It was pretty <laughs> early. Um, but it's a single barrel, which last last time I was on, I kind of made the comment that a lot of the special releases, like the BTAC line, the Four Roses limited edition, they're all small batches, and it's kind of because they can curate the flavor they want for that specific year. This one's a single barrel, which is a little gutsy. And yeah. I like it. Um and what's the what's the proof on this one? Uh, I don't know actually. What's it say there? Hold please. We gotta gotta move the fishnets. Yeah, <laughs> I like the fishnets. I leave it on. There. <laughs> um, the proof is ninety four point four proof, so forty seven point two percent. Oh, <laughs> compared to what we just had, good turn. Yeah. Now, is it good? Because it's good, or is it good because what we just had wasn't good? I think it's good because it's good. This is one I don't break out to too much, unless it's uh, yeah, I'd say. for the birthday boy over here. <laughs> but uh, it smells more like a rye to me than it does a bourbon. Yeah, I get that a little bit. The rye's kind of dominant. Because it has it has the the mintiness that I typically will get from. From a rye. But Michter's isn't a high rye whiskey, is it? I honestly don't know. They've got a couple different releases. I'm not really sure how they changed the mash bill between them. Uh, Future Perry edited in here whether or not uh, Michter's is a high rye whiskey. (laughs) Hello, it's Future Perry. Uh, Michter's is not a high rye bourbon. It only has 11% rye in the mash bill. Back to you, past Perry. Man, that smells so much better than that old oh, Forester did. By far. And I tasted it already. I'm getting like nutmeg, a little hint uh-huh. of cinnamon. This is good around, good for like around Christmas time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is a... And you know I love a good Christmas bourbon. Oh, I know you do. I don't it's know why nuanced. I said that that way. Um. <laughs> it's got nuance to it. Yeah. It's got layers. Subtleties. It's got, it's got layers. Foliage. Complexities. And- uh, no, it it is good. I, I break this one out, you know, kind of on a special occasion. And I know it's Bourbonite has also said that they this is special when they pull out on occasion. And I'm sure I've not had them back to back, but I'm sure my single barrel is different from theirs. Oh, I'm sure they're different in a great way. Yeah. Um, whoever's doing the the picking for this stuff is nailing it on the head. It's on point. Mm-hmm. For sure. I've always found the Michter's Ten Year to have kind of a Kind of a sugary quality to it as well. Um, kind of like a, which is funny because it's your birthday, but like cake frosting. Like that, okay. you know, like like real sugar frosting yeah. to it. It has I that kind of that. Um, that kind of consistency on the palate for me as but well. But like a buttercream frosting. See, I'm, I'm thinking more of like Oh, a, you're thinking like a... Like, you know the cupcakes we just had earlier? Yeah. Like that really? kind of sugary frosting. Okay, mm-hmm. I was getting more of the buttercream. Yeah. Thing. Okay. It's just good, man. It is yeah, good. It's it is just good. good. It is. I 
you know what's funny is the first time I had it was with Chad and Sarah. That was the first Michter's product I ever had. You lucked out. Man. No That's kidding. That's a good one to start with. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. And um, after that, I had it another time, and I just thought it was okay. And having had it, I mean, at least a third time since then, it's really good. And the more I'm letting it kind of sit on my palate, too, the more I'm getting some of those kind of charred flavors as well. There's kind of a toasted marshmallow yeah. note in there that I'm, I'm also finding. But thanks for bringing that one over, Swan. Yeah, I mean, you've got plenty of other good stuff sitting on the table here, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might want to hide that old Forester there. So let let's talk to you about. It's like a gingerbread th- cookie too. Oh, I see that. Yeah, yeah. So it is like a really good a winter good- Christmas time mm-hmm. kind of bourbon. I'm here. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. But anyway, let's let's talk to you about our preferences because barrel picks, as we've established, are single barrels as well. Would we prefer to get a single barrel, just a regular single barrel that's on the shelf, say a Knob Creek single barrel, or a single barrel pick? Because you can, you know, again, it may be a single barrel, but it may still have some of the consistencies that you would find bottle to bottle. It's single barrel picks. Those are going to be kind of off the wall from, from time to time. And to that point as well, you know, right now we're seeing some really good old Knob Creek single barrel picks coming out at like 14 years. There's been one that's 15 years that just came out too. Um, so what do you guys think? For me, it depends on the shop. If I have one, <laughs> if I have point. one really, really good single barrel, no matter the distillery, and I know that that shop picked it, then I'm more likely to say, Oh, well, last time I got the Knob Creek, this time I'm going to go and pick up their 1792 foolproof pick. Because last time, whoever picked it, their profile was good. So the first one's always a big gamble for me, and then after that, I'm more comfortable based on that first pick, picking up either what's on the shelf because I didn't like what I had before, or I did like what I had before, and now I'm I'm reaching for whatever pick they just brought in. Yeah, I can't agree more. (laughs) Because the person that's going to be picking it if you like what, if your if your palate is similar to what theirs is in that sense, um, you start to figure that out, and you're like, oh wait, now you're gonna be having these general good picks because you have a similar palate. And I bet if you would just talk to the person make, making the picks, they would be like, oh yeah, I really like this because of you know, and then you'd be like, oh yeah, I like that because of. Or maybe I just want to move on and not have that, or yeah, uh-huh. you know, yeah. whatever. So I the reason I I brought this one up this pour was because this is from a trusted store of mine in Lexington. This is a new riff single barrel called Patrick's Star. <laughs> it's uh, there's literally a Patrick Star from SpongeBob on it. Yes, there is. Uh, it is again a new riff single barrel pick. It's from Ernie's in Lexington. And Swan, I keep doing this to you, but what's the proof on that? I think it's in the 110 range, if I'm not mistaken. This one is 112.1. Okay, so I was a little bit off. But I've had a couple of amazing single barrel picks from Ernie's. And so, you know, this came out around the time that that whole... Do you guys remember there was that whole wave of new riff picks that started coming out, like, immediately after the the small batch... Or, excuse me, the bottled and bond did. And... um. I was like, oh, there's some really good stuff out there. And, you know, I trusted Ernie's. And so I was like, well, I'll grab a bottle. And I've, uh, honestly, I don't know if I've had a bad new riff pick yet. Can I be honest? I've not had one yet. At first, all, really? This first oh. one. I've had the, the rye and I've had the regular bottle and bond. I, I believe will. we've had one on the show before. I think we've just had the the regular bottle and bond. Really? Have we had the single barrel on the show? I think you know I had. I brought a single. Yeah, barrel. Yeah, you did. I That's yeah. right. I yeah. think we have one t- other time. Well, we we were, liked it. We enjoyed it. Yeah. 
Well, Swan and I reviewed with Chad the Bottle of Bond. And, uh, I mean, we were extremely pleasantly surprised by it. So Curtis is making some this faces. Is very interesting. It's just very different than what I was expecting. But I'm getting like a cinnamon. Very cinnamon, very like spice. Herbal, yeah. Yeah, herbal. Um, like a kind of like a cayenne mm-hmm. a little bit. Is it possible? Yeah, like a cinnamon tea. Oh, I totally can see that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, especially considering the, the herbalness yeah. of it. And now that, that you we mentioned the herbal, too. I'm getting like a leaf botanical kind of. Yeah. Swan, did you taste it? I did, yeah. Um, I like it. I'll be honest. I think it'll be better once they start having picks with some age to it. It is really, really good uh, for the, you know their new product. This is exactly four years. Um, the barrel proof does it well. It does it really well. I think the thing I'm most impressed with, and it's something that I see a lot of like even older players in the bourbon game not having, the nose carries to the palate. Oh, absolutely. Just like 100%. Everything you get on the nose, it's right there in the palate. And that's awesome. Because that's exactly what I look for when I'm thinking like quality. Well, it, it's funny that you say that because like for me – the the palate actually becomes better than the nose on this one. And it offers mm. it, it does offer everything that the nose does. But that's when I really start finding the the actual bourbon qualities to it. The you know, the standards behind it, the oak, the caramel, the vanilla. Mm-hmm. But then there's like a honey flavor to it as well. Um you know what this reminds me of? And as I said honey, I was like, oh, that's what it is. I when I get sick, I make hot toddies, mm-hmm. but I make them with green tea. That's what this reminds me of. I could get that, and that it still has the, you know, the the, the bourbon flavors to it, of course. But then the, that's where the herbalness comes through, and that's where you know I put honey in my, it it, it yeah, that's just part of it. And then I'm you know finding some citrus notes in there too, very specifically like lemon and a little bit of it like an, an orange peel, as well. I think this is at at four years old. This is so complex. It is, yeah. Yeah. I think what shocks me is just thinking about everything we've had. I like this better than the blends. Can I be honest with you? The oh, I agree. Pick. I do too. Yeah. So I, I mean, too. you've got somebody that this is their first. Well, I guess technically second, but you know, within a year of them putting out their own product, and it's kind of fighting some of the, the staples in the brand. True. With that being said, it is single barrel. It is. So, But the quality of the bottle and bond still holds up. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Like, it, it's... You know, I I know what you're saying. Yeah, I'm just but, saying, like, putting a little footnote on... Yeah. I'm not com- commenting on, on the narrative on what we were saying. I gotcha. Saying. I'm I gotcha. just saying, like, keep in mind... <laughs> It is, it a, is single a single barrel. barrel. Yeah. I don't know, man. I, I just think that New Riff has everything good going for them oh, right now. they do. You know, I, I'm, I'm just a fan of every product that they put out, whether it be single barrel or the bottom of the bond or the rye. The rye is amazing. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, never, I never thought that I would love a 95% rye whiskey. Yeah. But holy crap! <laughs> <laughs> Any chance that I get to to pull that out, and I I have said this recently. I'm kind of on a rye kick right now, anyway. So I just put some water in it, and it still holds up. Does it get better, or kind of have the same? It literally just takes some of the heat away. That's it. That's it. Yeah, there's it loses just a tad bit of the nuance, but I mean, some of that just comes with the proof. The but heat's not bothering me. No, it personally. didn't. It didn't bother me either. But I was just thinking, like, as a new drinker, if I was gonna do this, I'd be intimidated by the 112, just mm. a little bit, and the heat that I get from it, and adding some water to it. So, like, maybe some ice chips if you're new. This would stand up to it. This is not a new drinker's bourbon. No. Regardless of, well, okay, let me let me back up. The reason that I really say that is not just because of the proof. Or you know the the 
whether or not you can recognize it. This is still a $50 bottle of bourbon. Yeah, and the only reason I commented on it as a new drinker's bourbon at all is because if I was going in and I was looking at everything on the shelf and I was particular, like skewing younger, yeah, the bottle's gorgeous. Oh, I mean, yeah. Absolutely. I'd, I would immediately look at it and think, bottle, price, uh huh. that's got to be quality. For yeah. sure. And somebody and, going, I don't know what bottle and bond is. <laughs> this is a single bar? <laughs> but I don't think that... I don't know. I don't do. Do new drinkers know what single barrel means? I mean, I think that I think it, it's, e- sure it's a, it's kind of self explanatory. But I don't. But I, I would. I don't think they would. If they're they, brand new, yeah. I don't think they necessarily would understand single barrel. I mean, when when I first went to OBC, and I had that Four Roses pick that I loved so much, which maybe I'll break out for you for your little bonus episode. It was like, okay. anyway. I'll take that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Iverson said, have you ever had Henry McKenna bottled and bought in 10-year single barrel? It's like, no, I'd, I'd never had that before. Yeah. I didn't know what a single barrel was. I hardly knew what bottled and bond meant. Yeah. And so, you know, I just kind of took that recommendation at face value, got it, and it was amazing. It was so good. And I think it's always retrospective. Of like, oh, that's what I had. Uh huh. A little bit. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think my point with this one is, if I was twenty one and I was looking for like, you know, something new, six months after I just turned, and I'm like, I want something special. Yeah. I'm gonna walk in. I'm gonna see this. The bottle's gorgeous. It's got Patrick Star on there. <laughs> <laughs> Not all do though. Not all do, but I mean, this one does. I'm. Th- I'd probably just, I'd immediately be like, all right, what's up with this one? <laughs> yeah, got to get it. What's up with this there one? There is a standard offering of uh, New Riff Single Barrel, too, which is very good as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, again, like I've been saying, I've not had a bad single, or excuse me, I'm not, I've not had a bad New Riff product yet. Even just the regular New Riff Single Barrel that's on the shelf. And can I give a shout out to their social media manager? Because their barrel pick system looks phenomenal. And the only reason I know is because just using Instagram alone, it she's he or she's got so many pictures posted of them going in and doing picks and putting cool stickers on there. I mean, uh-huh. it's just it looks awesome. Oh, yeah. Oh, I've yeah. never looked at it. But also, just speaking on the branding of things, shout out to Durham, Durham Branding Co., Yes, because they are the yeah. ones that I don't know. I bel- I don't know if they branded it c- all completely, but they do like posters and do a lot of the work for them. Yeah, so they might have branded the entire thing. But Durham Brand and Co. They do and incredible all- work for them. Yes, incredible work. Not even for New Rift, but just a ton of companies. I just love this bottle. Yeah, it's 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 nice to look at. It's pretty. It's a it's a really quality pour. You know, I I just I just don't have anything bad to say about it. It's good, and honestly, it it's got some of the qualities from their standard bottle and bond offering, just kicked up to eleven. Yeah, it's good for sure. So we're not doing a review this episode, but I could go for one more pour before we wrap things up. What do you guys want to do? I I was kind of between this Four Roses single barrel or the Russell single barrel. Lean in four roses. Are I've you? I've not had one in a while. Yeah. And it just became allocated. So. Well, this is a single barrel barrel proof. Yeah. So I've not, I don't think I've had one of those in a while. Uh, I'll look at it real quick. <laughs> Let's see. I think I would uh, agree. Okay. Oh, because yes, I me. recently have had the Russells. Okay. I know that they're different, you know, but. Curtis, I want to show you something, though. I want to show you why this Russell's is important. Because this is the real king of Kentucky, Russell's pick, with Eddie Russell on the back riding his little motor scooter. That is awesome. (laughs) Okay, I don't know. Maybe I do want to have this. See, that's that's my dilemma there. I just... um, you just solved this one for me. Okay, great. <laughs> get, 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 the, get the real king out here. Yeah. Well, I figure, too, since, you know, in the bonus episode, we're going to be drinking awesome. some Four Roses as well, we may as well yes. go for some turkey. Mm-hmm. But 
Yeah. I'll have Fair the birthday like, boy. I'll let you guys decide. But. but. <laughs> <laughs> also, have you seen this graphic of, of him riding the scooter? Oh, I'll, I'll post it on uh, social media for anybody who's not seen that as well. So I know that we didn't really get to the bottom of whether or not single barrel or small batch is better. But, you know, what do you what would you guys prefer to, to really buy? Would you rather have a single barrel or would you rather have a small batch? I, I, I think I would do small batch unless I knew that... Unless, like, I could try the single barrel first, you know? <laughs> but that's so hard. You can't do that, so... Some stores you can. I, yeah, some stores you can, but <laughs> most you're not going to be able to do that. I would say I would prefer the small batch. For me, it's kind of like a complicated process and how I decide to buy it. Because uh, honestly, I'll go and pick up a small batch and I'll keep it and I'll drink on it until it's it's gone. And if I liked it, I'll go buy another. If I buy a single barrel that I like, I'm thinking damn, I better go buy like four more of those real oh, quick yeah. and stock yeah. up. So, I mean, if I'm just reaching on a, a normal night, I'm going to go small batch. If I find something that blows me away, like I had one, and it, anybody that's had Knob Creek picks knows that like as soon as you find one that's magical, you grab it. I had one, it was five, I think it was 5124, specifically barrel 5124. Yeah. I think I bought a whole case of it. Mm -hmm. a whole case because as soon as i had it i was like this is a booker's release they didn't tell anyone about Mm -hmm. and i took it home and i loved it and i was like perry try this and then i took it to chad and sarah and anyone that came over i was proud to show that off yeah Yeah. so i think it, it really depends on how good the single barrel pick is depending on the brand it is worth taking the risk on if you're looking at king of kentucky as a single barrel Eh, it's 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 hard to bite the bullet and take that kind of risk. But if yeah. you're looking at like a forty dollar bottle of Knob Creek, heck yeah, do it. Yeah, go nuts. See, I I am mostly of the same mindset. Last time that we we did the first part of, when we did the first part of this series, I very firmly said I would rather have small batch. The more that I thought about it, though. I think that I might skew a little bit more single barrel. And the reason is that, sure, it, it's it's nice to have that consistency, but when you can find these hidden gems, like the like the real King of Kentucky. It's a special like, moment. Like these new, yeah, like these new riff single barrel picks. I you know, a really, really good Weller antique pick. That is so rewarding and so exciting too and i think i burn through those bottles a little bit more than i do small batch or standard offerings because they're so good they're just that good that really? i'm like see when i get one like that i go Mm-mm. <laughs> Kurt, you're not you're not gonna have another glass of this i mean don't get me wrong you know i'm still like i i'm more often than not reaching for my tw samuels or my turkey yeah. 101 but still you know it I, I'll go, man, that was really good. Not that necessarily I'm having, a, you know, one pour after another in a single yeah. night, but, you know, maybe over a week or a couple of weeks, I'll have multiple pours of it. It's interesting. Because it's just that good. Yeah. It's interesting because last time I was the one that was going, no, single barrel. Like, single barrel, guys. Like, what, that's because, you you know, they're so unique in their own, and now I'm kind of like... Well, small batch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a tough, like, I don't know. It's hard to pick. Do you, can you pick? I think it depends on the time, the moment you're in, and, like, I think depending so on on what you're feeling, yeah. what you're kind of wanting. I think I'm the exact opposite of Kurt because he says he holds on to these bottles that are, like, special. Oh, you I, burn them? I mentioned that I bought that whole case of that 5124 barrel. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. I put everything on the back burner, and I was yeah. like, "This." I this feel like is it's it. a little different when you have, have some a, in here. When you <laughs> have a whole case, I yeah. don't think I would have burned through them all. Like, but yeah, 120 when, proof. It was when you, have a, <laughs> <laughs> when you have a whole case. It's, well, you know, I can just drink that that bottle. I got another. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Now, I I want to say though, to kind of wrap up my my point, 
you know, I, it wasn't until recently that I had a really good Elijah Craig pick. I've had more bad Elijah Craig picks than I have good. And same thing with E.H. Taylor single barrel. You know, there, there just hasn't been a whole lot to me that has stood out to where I've gone. I would rather skew single barrel over small batch. That being said, you know, if there's a really good Russell's pick, I'll probably get it. If there's a really good Knob Creek pick, I'll probably get it. But I think overall, you know, I think it's more circumstantial than it is, you know, I can decide one way or another. And there are people who fight for single barrels. There are. Yeah. I mean, they, they say that they, they live and die by them. There are people who say, I would rather have my Jim Beam white label. But, you know, what What do we always say at, at the end of the day? Drink what you like. Yep. And that's, you know, there's no wrong way to drink it. And you're always going to be, it's ever going to be, it's always going to be changing. Like It is. You know? yeah. Well, for us at the very least. I mean, there are people who have, you know, their handle of, of, of uh, Jack Daniels. Well, and that's, sure, right, that's yeah. how they're happy. But, you know, I think as you know, more serious bourbon drinkers. Yeah, we we changed with however the wind's blowing that day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. I mean, seriously. Like, the amount of times I've switched my mind, even in the liquor store, I just oh, go, yeah. I go, oh, well, single barrel, yeah. Then I, like, walk 10 feet, and I'm like, oh, well, there's that small batch. And, like, walk 10 feet, and you're like, oh, well, there's, <laughs> you know, it's just... <laughs> I get that. No, I totally, and you I spend, totally get that. You look up and you're like 40 minutes in. And you're like, jeez, <laughs> Kurt, just pick one. Mm-hmm. We all call ourselves Curtis in the in the liquor store. Though. Yes, everybody. Come on, Curtis. Come on, anyway, Kurt, what are you doing? Uh, well, what do you, what do you guys think about the uh, real king of Kentucky here, Russell's single barrel pick? This is another reason why sometimes I'm team single barrel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's this is a, this this is the one thing I really do like about this. You probably paid about the same price as you would for a regular thing of Russell's for this. This feels like a special release. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, I mean, that's that's just nuts because there's very few single barrels or picks that you know they pick up and then all of a sudden they're on secondary for two and three times the amount. And I know there's people that you know feel pretty strongly about that, like the one in century, the one in a century pick that came out and mm-hmm. everyone went nuts over. I never got to try it. It's nuts how expensive it's going for on secondary, but it's got to be good. And I'm sure it's a special release to anyone who gets their hands on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, when it was selling at the store, probably went for retail. I mean, it's it's some of them are just that good as a single barrel pick that you, you want them. It's like the lottery. <laughs> yeah. I I want to clarify, too. One in a century was only offered to a select few people. It wasn't in store. Yeah. So, you know. That one in particular is probably not there. But, like, some of the Four Roses, they'll go for, you know, a little bit on, yeah. on you know, secondary. And when they've sold, they're probably a slight premium over what they were normally. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's it, it's nothing it's nothing special to a lot of people. But then to your, you know, diehard bourbon drinkers, you're looking at it and you're like, Ten years and four months. Um, yeah. Can I get five? Is there a limit? Fifteen like, years on a Knob Creek single barrel. Yeah, it's like <laughs> I'll know, take you, two, please. You jump into the gun for those. So yeah. I mean, it's it, it's nice to pick up something special for the same price. Yeah. And you they're few and far between. Yeah, especially when you got out of Kentucky, we we found. So. Yeah. There's some really good picks. I mean, out, out of out of Kentucky as well, but. We still have some great stuff here. I mean, it's not a matter of, you know. We're a little spoiled, but I'm okay with it. <laughs> I am, too. I am, too. I can buy J.W. Dant whenever I want to. Oh, yeah. I can buy T.W. Samuels whenever. I know that those are bottom shelf. Oh, they're still pours, special. But they're still great. Well, I think that about does it for our conversation on single barrel bourbons. Like I said, there's no review. So we're just gonna swan. We're just gonna let Swan fist pump into the air for the rest of the. <laughs> it's just good, man. Because he likes. It's just good. He likes us so much. 
Uh, we're going to move into everybody's favorite segment, Tips and Bits, where we recommend things for you to check out because we enjoy them. So should we let the birthday boy go first? I can go. Okay, birthday boy. All right. So Here first. My Tips and Bits is going to be the New York Times. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Just as a whole? Just as a whole. Okay. I can as get on board com- with that. I just like as a New company as a whole, the branding as a whole, which is nice. But even the journalism is really good, too. Um, what I've found is, so I, I became a subscriber probably about a month ago or so. And there's something just so nice about even getting the just the uh, like Sunday paper of it. Do you get like the physical paper still? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Only, only on Sunday. So they have... I'm such a hipster when it comes to newspapers. I'm like, <laughs> I love newspapers. I love physical print. Yeah, I still uh-huh. get magazines in the mail. Yeah, same here. Um, so I'm a digital sub- subscriber, and I get the yeah. Sunday print. So Because I don't want to spend the money to like you know get all the papers in the world, and then I'm like, right. what do I do with this? So I only get the Sunday. But the New York Times journalism is, you know, it's very... I would say, I mean, they lean a little more to the left on some things, but um, they're very fair on both of their aspects politically. But even past that, you have like business news, you have tech news, you have just really, really interesting stories. Like, it blows my mind. Um, Yeah. And this has just been kind of my New Year's thing of uh, being more informed about current events and so the new york times i've been reading a lot on just different current events different topics that are happening throughout the world uh not even just politically like you know that can get stale after a while like i don't want to talk about that you know no but they have such a good i don't want to think about it either yeah exactly they have (laughs) such a good array of things and they're really making everybody says like print is dead um they're really kind of. I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. It's it's it it, it is experiencing a it's, resurgence. Exactly, and uh, and they have just really multiple products like the digital, and then they also have the like podcast. There's also a it's called the daily, mm-hmm. and the daily podcast is really nice too. Uh, so New York Times as a whole really been killing it lately for me. So I've got kind of a love-hate relationship with my recommendation here. <laughs> okay. It gets interesting. Have you ever watched uh, – they just put it out not too long ago. It's the Umbrella Academy on Netflix. Yes. I want to watch it so badly. I'm not going to ruin anything for you at all. That's okay. I already listened to the Weekly Planet this week. It okay. Doesn't, it doesn't matter. I really like the plot. It's a little formulaic on some of the episodes. But the ending, though? Yeah. That's where things turn for you. Yes. Yeah. In almost the ending of every episode, they're like, and blank, dun, dun, dun. So you're like, okay, well, but that's the thing is every, at the end of every episode, you're like, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Yeah. I, the, the reason that the love-hate relationship comes into play, it's like the lighting guy took a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened. Like you watch the show and I'm like, is my brightness on my TV messed up? What's going on here? It's just such a dark TV show. It's good though. It really is. But like you're just you're looking at it and you're just like, I gotta turn the brightness up yeah, on this like, one real on. quick. Like it's kinda strange. Really good though. Definitely worth watching. A little unorthodox. Um I, I like that there wasn't like because they do this with a lot of superhero movies. I can't tell you how many times I've seen the Spider Man and Superman origin story. Well yeah. It's great, but I don't need to see it every movie. With this, it's like literally a two to three minute opener and you're like, I get it. I'm good. That's it. Yeah. And they kind of do some flashbacks here and there, but they, they kind of hit it on the head as soon as it starts. So you can jump right into it. The best explanation of Umbrella Academy that I heard was, it's like the X-Men if Professor X sucked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You were a terrible... So spot on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, that That's what I'm going to be... I. I I almost said that's what I'm going to be tipping or bidding this week, and I <laughs> realized that that's not how I wanted to phrase that. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to be getting into that over the next uh, couple of weeks because uh, you know Lucy's going to be gone, so I'm going to have some free time, and I'm 
gonna watch the crap out of it. Yep. And everything. Oh, yeah. it's, um, it's pretty good. But you can run for this it. week. But for this week, though. So I talked about it last week um, as what I was going to be recommending. But Gary Clark Jr.'s new album came out on Friday. No way. Uh, I've not seen this yet. It's so good. It's not as good as his last album. I will say that much. Some of the songwriting on it, though, is unbelievable. So to, to kind of put this into perspective for, for people, I am a huge John Mayer fan. I mean, really, at, at, you know, I play guitar, and he's a huge influence of mine, and, you know, as, as well as songwriting. John came out with a new song on Friday, this past Friday. I thought that it was going to blow everything out of the water. Gary Clark Jr.'s album was a thousand times better than John's new song was on Friday. I mean, I, I cannot stop playing it. I, I just love it so much. It's it's a little political. It is. It has an aspect to it. But, and I might catch some flack for it, you got to give him the time of day. You got to listen to him. Because he's very honest in it. He makes some good points. And not some good points. He makes very good points. So if you like Gary Clark Jr., if you like that genre of music, check it out. No pressure. (laughs) Don't take that as, you know, whatever. We're all still here drinking bourbon and having a good time. But his new album's really good. That's that's all I'm going to say. As somebody who works at a data entry job, this is what I'm going to be doing all tomorrow. I had no idea it dropped. Did you not? I had no clue, yeah. So that's what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. Apple Music, bro. Mm -hmm. Or Spotify. Whatever. Yeah, or both, you know. Yeah. We're both, dude. Big podcast, fan. Yeah. Man. Oh man, I listen to podcasts not nonstop. We, not even because we oh, make one. That, Just podcasts, man. So they're of, nice. I um, an, an, another tip and or bit. Um, <clears throat> one of the YouTube channels that I watch all the time is uh, called Stupid Old Studio, or Stupid Old Channel. Excuse me. They're part of the Stupid Old Studio in Melbourne, Australia, and they have a show on it called Gamey Gamey Game. I think you have you mentioned this. Before? I might have. I think I'm not you have. sure, but they try to talk about video games, <laughs> but they bring comedians on who are like mainly improv based, yeah. and they just riff the entire time. So <laughs> the amount of time that they spend actually talking about video games, as opposed to you know the amount of time that they're riffing, it's about anywhere from fifty fifty to seventy five twenty five. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So there's a lot of really funny comedy that goes on with that. So if you're a gamer or you know you enjoy, yeah, podcasts. that branch of comedy or whatever, yeah, and that Dude, those what what I was gonna say. Sorry. That thank you. I appreciate that. Um, there's a YouTube version of it, but there's also now a podcast version of it. Okay. Um, so as good as the video version of it is, like I don't always have the time to watch YouTube videos. Yeah, you know, because they're an hour, hour and a half long. Now I can just listen to the podcast. Yep. So, anyway, that was tips and bits for this week. Um, do we have anything else? Yeah, I think that about nope, does it. I'm good. Uh, where can everybody find you guys on social media? Um, I'm at the Bourbon Finder on Instagram. I need to branch out a little bit. I've got some people asking me to show up on <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> Not made my appearance, but I've got the page. It's just parked. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's, that. that's where it's at um, I am at Kurt Con on Instagram and at Kurt underscore Con 15 on Twitter there we go yeah, yeah. Um, I am at P Ritter 1492 on social media you can follow the show at my bourbon pod on Instagram Facebook and Twitter please leave a five star rate and review on iTunes five stars and be honest I guess but also generous if you feel like it, um, somebody left a review. I haven't even told you guys this. They left a review this week um, that the title, it was one star. The title of it was Weak Sauce, and all that they said was Always Giggling. And that's the entirety of the review that they left. I agree. Okay. Weak Sauce. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to agree with Always Giggling. No, just Weak Sauce. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. 
it's really Perry, constructive. Will you stop? Well, Wait. this has been this has been <laughs> Curtis's <laughs> last show of this. Will you guys uh, stop giggling? I would please. love to stop giggling. Okay. Um, we'll just be very serious for the next. Yes, bourbonshop.threadless.com is where you can find all of our apparel yes. and merch. Uh, you can we still buy bourbon. tickets to the live show in April on April sixth in Louisville at the Silver Dollar Club, the Women of Bourbon Show. We have nine tickets left, uh, five dollars a piece. Uh, also, please become a patron of the show at patreon.com slash podcast. You're going to get to hear the bonus show that we're about to record for Curtis's birthday, where he chooses special pours. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, can even you do even it? imagine? I couldn't like, even do it. Could you no. imagine 45 <laughs> minutes of us just being like, yeah. Or like Ben this Stein, is, just yeah. straight laced. This is very nutty and has chocolate notes. And smells like And bones. smells like... Roasted marshmallows. Anyway, yes. Yeah, like, come on. Yeah, that that's our side. We anyway, can cut that out if we want. But no, I'm we're just not. Saying. We're gonna leave it in. Uh, uh, patreoncom slash Uh is where you can hear the bonus episode that we're about to record, where Curtis goes to my bourbon cabinet and chooses whatever he wants from it for his birthday. For as little as a dollar a month, you can help the show go. Um, you get. Uh, extra content like bonus episodes every month. Um, you're going to be getting a couple here soon, Patreon, so definitely be on the lookout for those. I think that about does it next week. I'm not entirely sure. There might be something special or it could be an interview. I'll let you know later on in the week. But I think that about does it for us. I'll see you next week. Oh, oh, I know one thing I forgot. YouTube.com slash Listen My Bourbon Podcast. Every Thursday night at 9 o'clock, I do a live stream there. Um, so come and hang out. It's a good time. That's it. Yeah, sorry, I forgot. We'll see you next week or on Thursday. But until then, I'm Perry. I'm Curtis. I'm Swan. And this is My Bourbon Podcast. Mm-hmm.